So what is energy efficiency? Well, so here's the formula for it. And so efficiency is equal to the energy um, that you have outputted um, divided by the energy that you have inputted into a particular system. And that efficiency typically is given in percent, although it doesn't have to be. Now, what is energy out and then what is energy in is something that you may want to think about. So energy out is the desired energy for whatever it is that you want to be able to use. So for example, if you have electrical energy that you're using, and let's say you want to be able to shine a light, well, the light is the desired energy. So that would be the light energy or radiant energy. And the inputting energy would be all of the energy that you have put into okay, that light bulb, let's say. And that energy is typically going to be much larger than the actual radiant energy, which is converted. Now, because of the law of conservation, you can put up a link up above there, you may recall that, hold on a second, while well, the energy in, okay, so the energy at the start should equal the energy at the end. And that is true. The only thing that happens is, please remember, that energy will just get transformed. And it doesn't necessarily get transformed into the desired energy that you may want. So another example might be if you're driving in a car and you're using fuel, unfortunately, you know, our cars are not that efficient, okay, at least on the fuel side, and even on the battery side. And what happens is that a lot of the energy will get transferred not into necessarily, necessarily kinetic energy, which is the energy due to motion of that vehicle, but they may be dissipated into, for example, thermal energies, which might increase the temperature okay, of the vehicle in different parts okay, of the regions. And it might also transfer into other energies as well. So the whole idea behind efficiency is if you're going to take your energy and you're going to use it, you want to be able to see how much of that energy will get transferred into your desired form of energy. That is all. And then you want to convert and it's basically a ratio between one and the other to be able to see that and convert it back into a percent. So let's take a look okay, at a few examples so that you can see exactly what I'm referring to. So here, is our first example and this is an incandescent light bulb now an incandescent light bulb is actually not very efficient and you'll see that right here and ha it has been around now for you know probably about a hundred and maybe 50 years even and now it's great because it's capable of producing radiant energy or light energy but a lot of it and you may notice this i mean i don't recommend you touching a light bulb uh, especially if it's an incandescent light bulb, because a lot of it, you know, is going to get into and transfer into thermal energy. Okay. And typically we might think of that as, you know, increasing the temperature of that light bulb. So in any case, let's take a look and see, you know, what happens. So we have an uh, incandescent light bulb and it has used 60 kilojoules of energy in 20 minutes. So that is the information that is provided to us. Now it has transformed only uh, 2,880 joules. Now notice the units, kilojoules and joules. So we're gonna have to have them um, to be consistent. So they have to be the same of that energy to radiant energy and 2.88 kilojoules. Okay, so that's what it would be because as you may recall, kilo is just simply 1,000. So what is the efficiency of the light bulb? So let's take a look at this and break this down. And in terms of the given pieces of information, what you would have here is your energy input, so your energy in is equal to 60 kilojoules. That is the total energy that is used within that 20 minutes. The energy output, okay, at least the desired energy, and this would be the desired radiant energy because that's what we typically use the light bulb for, okay, which is to give us light. So that is just simply radiant energy, and that is going to be 2,880 joules. And now this is nothing else but simply 2.88 kilojoules. I just want to make sure that these two are consistent. And don't forget, 
you know, so one kilojoule is equal to 1000 joules. So that's just basically prefixes, right, that you have, and I can put up a link up above there, okay, to get yourself refreshed on prefixes if you need to. Now, in terms of your efficiency, so instead of writing the whole word, I'll just write EFF, is equal to, so that would have been your 2.88, that is the kilojoules, divided by, and this is going to be 60, I'm going to drop the units because now the units notice they will cancel they have to cancel if you want them to be consistent and then you multiply it by 100 percent so this isn't very difficult for us to do now so for this if i take out my calculator here so i'm going to get 2.88 divided by 60 okay and that is 0 0.048 and if you multiply by 100 so that is approximately 4.8 percent of efficiency so not very efficient at all so we're using you know approximately five percent and that actually is typical so if you would look this up on the internet you can take a look at various incandescent light bulbs and you'll see that they're going to be really sub five five percent in terms of the efficiency so that's one example that you have here and this is a pretty nice one now let's compare this to a light emitting diode so these ones you might kind of see this kind of acronym LEDs, right? So LED just stands for light emitting diode. Now you may not have any idea what a diode is and that's okay. It's not that you have to know what exactly causes okay, that transfer of electrical energy to basically radiant energy or light energy. But this is a different technology that we use. And nowadays, you know, more and more people are utilizing this Okay, in terms of their lighting uh, bulbs. So in a light emitting diode, notice that it utilizes 10.8 kilojoules in the same amount of time, in 20 minutes. So a lot less, so about a sixth, all right? Now let's take a look, okay, and see that it is capable of transforming 9.72 kilojoules of energy into radiant energy. So way more efficient, you can just see by the numbers, 10.8 and 9.7, well, those are very close. So it looks like our efficiency is gonna be much, much better. So here, in terms of our given pieces of information, so here you would have, so this is the energy, okay? So I guess I put out, put here, so here I have to be careful that I named them properly. So energy in is equal to 10.8 kilojoules. And then we have energy out, all right? So that is our desired. So that's 9.72 kilojoules. So these are actually consistent, which is great. And our efficiency, so in terms of our efficiencies, so this would have been, okay, the 9.72 divided by, it's gonna be 10.8 multiplied by 100% so that we can obtain what that is. So let's put that into our calculator divide them up, so not very difficult. Okay, so times 100, so this is gonna be approximately 90%. So this is really good in terms of its efficiency. And that indeed is, again, more or less the case. You know, the LEDs may not be exactly 90%, but they're pretty, pretty damn close. And you'll see that, again, if you take a look and do a little bit of a search, and this is one of the main reasons why, you know, we would prefer to have the LEDs. And with the LEDs, you know, even the ones that are shining here above, those are the ones that I have. If I touch them, okay, I don't feel that, you know, thermal energy, okay, so the, 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 the heating up, the, the, the actual um, increase of the temperatures, okay, I can actually touch them. If they were incandescent, there's no way I would have gotten burned because of the fact that they're just so hot. Okay, so there you have it. So that's another example right there. Here's a third example to kind of end off this video. And this one is interesting because it's to do with photosynthesis in plants. So you may remember that photosynthesis in plants, so what they are capable of, and this is something that we certainly are not capable of. You know, we utilize chemical energy to fuel ourselves from the food. But plants okay, are capable of taking radiant energy, and this is coming from the sun, and then uh, transforming it into chemical energy. Now, this process, this is for one of the plants, okay? so this doesn't mean that it's for all the plants, but it's about 11.2% efficient. So it's not super efficient at all, right? We're losing almost 90% to some other form of energy, 
but the plant is capable of converting in photosynthesis, let's say for this one, this example, 11.2. Now, if that plant okay, has been exposed to 2.1 kilojoules of energy in a certain amount of time, then what amount of energy was transformed into chemical energy? All right, so we wanna see okay, what that happens. And now convert to calories. And so here you go. So in terms of calories, you know, what is interesting is that one calorie is approximately 4184 joules. And if this is the first time that you're getting exposed to a, you know, a food calorie, okay, for instance, so it's the, the capital C, um, this is indeed, okay, what the actual conversion ratio would be. So let's take a look and try to calculate this. So given pieces of information, so what we have is now we are given efficiency. So the efficiency is 11.2%. We are given, okay, so notice that the energy in, okay, that is coming in is 2.1 kilojoules. And what we're interested in is the energy out, okay? So now the energy out in this case is really the energy which is gonna be stored into chemical energy. So that's the um, desired energy. So if we substitute this back into our formula, so efficiency, so again, this is energy out all over energy in, okay, times 100%. Now the 100% is gonna, you know, change back that 11%. So this is gonna be 11.2 divided by that 100%. So that's gonna be 0.112. So that's just converting it back into decimal. And then what I have is I can solve for my energy out. So this is going to be you know, 2.1 kilojoules. And now I can multiply both sides. So it's gonna be 0.112 multiplied by 2.1. And that is, so my energy out, okay, within there is going to be equal to, so notice it's not much, okay, 0 0.2352. Now, but please remember this is kilojoules because I stuck to kilojoules. So if you wanted this in joules, you can multiply this answer by a thousand. And that's gonna be approximately 235.2 joules. Now, I'm not going to round this at all. Um, the last step is because they want it in calories, so that's not a problem. So I can take this, convert it back into calories. So one calorie is 4184 joules, right? So therefore, I can take this, let me bring this back, and really it's going to be my answer divided by 4184. So it's very, very little. Okay, as you can see there, I'm not gonna keep too many, I'll just keep two. Okay, um, that's what you, we would get in terms of calories. So very, very tiny amount because of the efficiency. Now again, this is uh, based on the input, so 2.1 kilojoules coming in. So obviously the plant is exposed to the sun for quite a long time throughout the day. Um, as it goes through. And now you can see you know, what happens with the seasons uh, with respect to the photosynthesis. So clearly, you know, most plants are gonna be super dormant, okay, in the winter seasons um, because of the fact that, you know, the sun exposure just isn't just uh, much, okay, and the energy coming in isn't enough to be able to stimulate that photosynthesis. So over time, okay, by nature, kind of evolutionary stages, what you have is that, you know, the plants do become dormant at certain times, depending on where they are, of course, in the world. If you're somewhere in the warmer climates, well, then you're exposed to the sun quite quite a bit and you'll have photosynthesis all over the place. It isn't like, you know, a place where you're when it's much colder um, there and uh, your days are much shorter and also the sun itself isn't strong enough. So it just depends, okay, where you are. So there you have it. So now you've been introduced into uh, efficiency for energies, and hopefully you can see that the calculations aren't that difficult. All right, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Happy learning. Bye, everybody.